Hello everyone, welcome to another edition of Prime Tech. Today we are having a conversation with one athlete who has over the years flown high the flag of Ghana in yeah, the field and track events. Um, he's been a javelin thrower. He's sold an incredible story about Ghana and uh, tonight we are privileged to be speaking to John Ampoma who is here in the African Games 2023 competing for Madagana. John, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Thanks for asking. Thanks. thanks. How about you? I'm also doing good. Thanks for making our time to speak to us despite the, the busy schedule that you've got. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Welcome back home. How has uh, home been like? It's, it's been good always. Um, you know, the atmosphere, the crowd, um, seeing friends and, and families. Um, it's just been amazing. Just a very wonderful welcome. I, I, Tell me your, your, your early days, your life beginnings. How were they like? Um, it was rough. Um, started, um, you know, athletics or track and field wise. I did, uh, I think they are playing the national anthem, so. Oh, let's proceed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, you know. Uh, but yeah, um, so like I was saying, um, we, I, I did started uh, a little bit early on, like, um, many other athletes who um, start right from elementary school um, with their sports. I started, I think, second year of high school. Yeah. Um, so I didn't know what I was good at until uh, my sports master just found me and said, hey, I think you can throw javelin because you are big. And that's how I started. Um, but uh, long story short, um, as you know, you know, and many Ghanaians also know, uh, infrastructure-wise, uh, very difficult. There was a point of time where I was just using regular sticks, um, go to the bush, cut some sticks to throw. Um, post high school, I didn't go to college or university here, so that was the end. And then, um, that's, I mean, basically after high school, I did exceptionally well in high school um, with a boys javelin. But post high school, that was it. Um, so I went off for a few uh, years, 2009, 2010, 2011, I joined the Ghana Police Service. And then um, the Ghana Police Service did um, CISA Games. And that was the last CISA Games that Ghana has ever hosted since 2011. So uh, a friend, a good friend of mine, who is also a police officer, uh, Michael Adusai X2, um, I didn't, I wasn't recruited, you know, as you know, like some athletes will be recruited, yes. you know, yes. through the sports. I wasn't. I went through general enlistment. So I went to training at Hull and then uh, X2, who... In the Volta region. In the Volta region. X2, who was recruited as a sports uh, police personnel, they were training in Kofodia. I'm just kind of giving you like yeah, a chronic yeah, uh, of yeah. how my story. Yeah. Um, That's the you story know. I want. Yes. So uh, X2 went to training school in Kofodia, the Kofodia uh, police training. And the Kofodia police training, they don't have a shooting range where police officers, like the you yeah. could go and practice. So they use the, tr the, the shooting range in Ho, which is the 66 military artillery. Okay. That's where the okay. rangers. So X2 came and then that day, I don't know what happened. Stu saw me when they came for their shooting training. So he quickly went and told the sports officer who was, um, who I think he's right now, he's uh, chief support okay. uh, at a, uh, and a staff officer at uh, Northern Region. His okay. name is Mr. Ahmed Mohama. Okay. He was the former uh, sports officer at the police. Is it the uh, Ahmed, Mehma, uh, Ahmed Mahama, no? Yeah, he just probably, maybe, just yeah, maybe yeah, he's yeah, yeah, he's the one. <laughs> Um, so I'm just kind of giving you like a yeah. story of how, you know, it all began and then, you know, all the challenges that I went through. So X2 saw me quickly, alerted uh, Chief Supo Ahmed Mahama and then Chief Ahmed Mahama wrote a signal. That time they were doing like they were going to have host a sister game. So he invited me uh, to camp in. I was a recruit. I went through a whole sort of challenge before I was even released. That is a story for another time. But uh, you know, long story short, I um, joined CISA Games. I competed. Uh, I came second uh, in 2011, and then um, Professor Francis Jodu 
uh, who is the former athletics chair, was there. He saw me and he invited me to national camp. And then from there, I had opportunity, instead of you know, going for you know, duties and other stuff, I had opportunity to stay in camping, to train, um, you know, better equipment. Um, and then uh, I was selected for the African Games based on my performance uh, in Porto Novo. That was yeah. 2012. Yeah. And then I won silver medal. Yeah, I remember. I mean, from 60 something to 73. Um, so that is how I started. And I was like, okay, now I can do it. I've realized that if I have better coaching, uh, I have better like equipment, I'll be able to do it. And better environment. Be better environment. Thank you. So Prof. Diodu uh, had a kind of a model that he pushes through, uh, given the fact that Ghana, we still lack infrastructure, uh, we still like co lack coaching. Uh, so he had a model to kind of uh, ship athletes that uh, have potentials of making it to the Olympics. Uh, so I went through another series of transition where he and the, um, the GAA uh, members secured a scholarship for myself and f uh, some of my uh, teammates. I think we were three when we started. And then a few years later, um, you know, he's continued sending like, you know, a whole bunch of athletes like Janet Amposa, Samson Larry, yeah. Agnes Abu, uh, Ilmar so you can mention, you know, yeah. um, a whole bunch of athletes, right? Um, so it was through his model that gave me that exposure and that gave me that courage. Um, and once I go to the U.S., better equipment, better facilities, better coaching. I don't have to worry about food. I don't want to wor worry about good nutrition, treatments. And that is why I took off. That's why my career took off. So I just wanted to give you like a bit of a yeah, background. Yeah, that, that's actually the story uh, I was of, looking out of, for. Yeah, but, yeah. but it was one story or one era you said it is a story for another day. The challenges you had to go through to be released by the police service. What were some of those challenges? I think I think I, I want to kind of pause on that. Uh, but I don't want that one. To release you? Um, not really. I think I I have been one of the. Uh, I have been very, lucky you know, lucky. I have been um, very. I've received so much from support. the country, support yeah. from um, the police service, uh, from Mr. Ahmed Mahama, Chief yeah. Super Ahmed Mahama, uh, from GA, from Professor Francis Diodu. I think I have been one of the biggest beneficiary of all these institutions and people that I've mentioned. So I, when I say a challenge, it's not a challenge um, that challenges an individual... Are, are quite positive and negative. Yes. There are challenges that reinforces you sure. to get better. Sure. Were those challenges that reinforces John and Poma to say, okay, this should be a stepping stone for me to fly hard? Every, every uh, opportunity that I comes my way, I take advantage of it. Rain or shine, um, coming here, um, you know, um, and that has been my career, you know, from the beginning of my career. Those obstacles that comes my way, it pushes me. Anytime I see an obstacle in my way, it really the adrenaline makes wants me, to break it. yes, <laughs> force me to really do extra. In fact, and I'm going to give you like, a, a, like a, an example. Um, in, in the javelin, we have tailwind, we have headwind. Headwind is when uh, uh, the, the wind is blowing yeah. in front of you. Yeah. And then we have a, like a tailwind when the wind is blowing Supports, behind you. Yeah. It supports you. Um, in, in the track and field, it, it will be, if it's anything above, 2.0 yeah. is negative. It's negative. Like they, they won't count it, yeah. right? But in javelin, it's not like that. People, most javelin throwers like it when the wind, wind is blowing behind blowing them. Behind it gives them like an opportunity. I have never had a personal best in that situation. All my personal best has come when the wind is blowing towards against me, you. against me. Wow! It gives me that Basically kind of yes. It just yes. It pushes me to really. Um, Think about my techniques, number one, and also I use the wind as like a force to really attack it. And in so doing, I've always had a PR or personal best um, in in, um, in 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 a headwind situation. So I this analogy goes to like any obstacle that comes my way. I'm just trying to say that any obstacle or obstacle that comes my way, I don't see it as a negative. I see it as a another it's challenge, a positive. a positive, and it really pushes me to do extra. So that is what I would say. I'll, I'll come back to this story, but uh, family-wise, um, how many are you upgrading from home? How, what kind of support did you get from home? 
and how did that set the tone for you to get here? Uh, so family, you know, um, don't know much about sports. Uh, uh, we are family of s seven siblings, my sisters, my brothers, I'm like kind of in the middle. Okay. Um, from one mom, one dad, um, my, both of my parents are alive. I think all they do for me is pray for me. <laughs> <laughs> the, pride, the, the pride of seeing their country. Yeah, that is, that is all. I never watching you I know. in these African games. I, I so know, I know. Uh, in fact, I think, you know, uh, because my, um, you know, coming here was kind of a last minute. It was kind of, I didn't really tell, talk about it or publicize it. Uh, but um, all of a sudden the news broke and That's then, it, yeah. oh my goodness, the calls that I have been receiving, the text message from, you know, friends, the Facebook hypes from my elementary school, high school, uh, JSA, man, <laughs> I didn't know I have that kind of love and support. Um, so uh, with my family, that is uh, the support that I think I, I have for them. They, they have always been rooting for me, uh, always proud of me. Uh, I am the only person who this sports um, in the family. My mom was around when she was younger, but I think I pick it from my mom's side a little bit. You took your mom's DNA? I think I did. Your I father did. would not be happy to hear uh, that. <laughs> well, he, he'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, so, um, so yeah. Um, I have other relatives who uh, also did a bit of sports, but in terms of um, getting to the highest level, it's just me. But they've always been rooting for me, and they've always been proud and uh, praying for me that I it kind of... Um, um, to, 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 you know, to have me as a brother in their family and I'm just proud of them too. My wife is back in the U.S. watching me. I met my wife through sports. Professor Francis Diodi recruited. Um, my, my wife, uh, she, um, her parents are from Ghana, uh, but she was born outside. Uh, and per our constitution, right, you know that if yeah. your parents or grandparents are from here, technically you can um, yeah. compete. They won't allow you to buy for office though. But anyways, that's <laughs> that is not a story. Um, but uh, so in 2014, uh, Prof. Zodu, another model that he introduced was um, kind of boost the Ghanaian contingent with um, you know foreign um, uh, like third or second generation immigrants who were born outside, Ghanaians who were born outside who and, we, uh, and willing to compete for Ghana and I, willing I to remember, compete for I Ghana. That. I yes, that. so uh, we he brought a lot of people. In fact, he still does. We have a short putter, uh, you know, Jema, uh, Flanks, all yeah. these kind of guys, you yeah. know them. Um, and it, it really boosts, you know, our, our team and we did very well. So that model, uh, so when Julia, my wife, came on the team, she was a thrower too. Uh, oh, okay. She, I think she holds the national record in oh, this case. you're going to produce throwers in your house. <laughs> we hope so. Um, so in 2014, so that is how, you know, I met my wife. So I just want to say I've been so... I have benefited a lot from from this sports, this sports yeah. um, you know, and just wearing this jersey, having Ghana, just I don't know how to describe it. It's just a great feeling to really represent the country, um, you know, rain or shine, whether you win or you don't win. To be able to wear this, we are thirty something million, to be able to come here and represent the whole nation. It's a feeling that I don't know how to describe it, but I. I'm extremely grateful um, for, you know, uh, for Ghana, um, for the Ministry of Youth and Sports. I'm extremely grateful for, uh, you know, the Ghana Olympic Committee, um, you know, the Ghana government, um, the Ghana Athletics Association, Professor Franziudu, the Ghana Police Service, Mr. Ahmed Mohammed. I can't mention in my family. I cannot. Um, but talk, I, talk without giving them yeah. the thumbs up for uh, what they've, they've done for yes, you. But, yes, but extremely grateful. But, but, tell, but tell me one thing. Um, there are many things that, like you mentioned, in the African Games when you went there and you won a silver medal, sometimes it's quite rare, considering the fact that we always pride ourselves as a country of um, athletes. But uh, hitherto, we, we, we hardly paid attention to an error like javelin, an error like shot put, an error yeah. like even high jump and triple jump and all those things. You, but you stood out as one of the few who used javelin to actually sell this country so much. Tell us, what are some of the things that are required that we have to do, not to just focus on the tracks, but know that on the field as well, we have athletes who can, who can really do great stuff. In fact, you've chalked some successes in that area. Yeah. So, um, yes, that's, that is, um, I think it's, it's not just javelin, but, you know, 
and all the other field events uh, is not a very known um, kind of people are not used to. There are some events. Um, I mentioned steeple chase and someone was like, what is steeple yeah, chase? Yeah, what is steeple chase? So I think it starts with the media. Um, people Why are get you to know. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm actually saying that um, to be able to kind of um, draw people's attention that track and field is not about running. Yeah. Um, it's, it starts with education. And once in a while, you're going to have the John and Pumas, you know, and others who come up and then draw people's attention and they will be like, oh, so javelin is also part of athletics, right? But if you, uh, uh, Fent, uh, Sadiq Adams, uh, you know, Kevin, Yao Fosu, I, you know, Benghazi, you know, mention names, they, you know, if you guys begin to talk about you know, just a segment and just talk about every event under track and field, one by one. I think that is where the people are going to be like, and potentially also project some Ghanaians who have succeeded in that field. Then that really draw people's attention because people watch, you guys have a lot of viewers uh, and you guys are so powerful. <laughs> um, and I think that is where people are going to begin to realize, oh, okay, there's a, 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 a sports called a javelin, javelin or, or shot put or discus. Uh, there's true. Yeah, hammer true. There's so much potentials in this country. But everybody want to run. I started as a runner because I didn't know what javelin was. It was until I got to high school that my coach saw me and said, you are big, you can throw, just like that. And that is how it began. Uh, but if we can project some of this stuff and the kids are seeing it and they say, okay, maybe I'm not fast like Joseph Polamo or, or Azamati, Benjamin Zamati, but or, I can throw, I don't have to throw, uh, run a lot to throw the javelin. I can do just 20 meters and throw the javelin. Let me go try it. I mean, some kids are throwing catapults and they're throwing stones, hitting people's car. <laughs> just give them the javelin. Just, you know, um, you know expose, expose this, sports, uh, this field to them. Um, and 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 they they will uh, they'll be they'll be um, able to kind of think about like I said, the equipment and the facilities are very important. But there was a point of time there was a point of time where I was using stick to throw. To train Julius Yogo, he started with YouTube. There's so many people that started um, on this continent learning how to throw javelin by using like you know unconventional yeah. equipment yeah. right but if people don't know that there's an event called javelin that people can really train and really go to the olympics and compete in the javelin how are they going to know javelin found you or you found javelin but i think ja <laughs> that's a good question the x and before the, the the hand or the hand before there is uh i would say um people uh, my coach discovered me, so I don't know. <laughs> You've not answered the question. <laughs> um, I would say javelin found me. Yeah. You are destined to be to be somewhere to throw. Maybe that's also another uh, way of looking at it or kind of uh, explaining. You've spoken so much about what the the sport has has presented to you, but. And then you've also brought the responsibility to my doorsteps and that of my colleagues as media. We have a role to contribute in terms of letting people understand that when we say athletics, it's not just about people sprinting yeah. or people doing a marathon or a half marathon and, yeah. and all that. But to also speak about the other disciplines like the hammer throws, the discards, the javelins and all that. Um, I want to have an understanding of what some of the career opportunities are for someone in your area of like, you know, we are a people, right? Yes. We always look for a success. Mm -hmm. Oh, if this person succeeded, then I can also do it. Yes. So what are some of the opportunities that if I decide to get myself involved in javelin, mm -hmm. I will succeed? Okay. So one, um, I think I would say, find what you love. If you find what you love, uh, success comes automatically. If you don't love what you do and you're thinking about maybe I'm going to get money from this, I'm going to get this from it. And if you're not getting that, then that is where you begin to kind of um, pull back. 
I love to throw. I think like you said, maybe I was destined to throw. I always love to throw and I love to wear this vest all the time. So regardless of what I get from it, that is not one of the things that I look for, right? So but the, the motivation is the motivation is there. I because I love to do it. I love to draw javelin. I love to throw stuff. Um, but let me put that aside and just answer your question straight. Like when you're talking about success, um, here in the even the University of Ghana, uh, I've heard. I'm not too sure, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. That uh, there are athletes who are basically been having like a free scholarship where they are not paying fees. Yeah. It is most of the universities. I yeah. know I know UDS, I know D school, I there know you go. UCC. Where I I schooled, so I know. I know. In fact, Rosie Ebua was, was was one of such. That's the first benefit. That's the first benefit. To be able to have free education without paying a penny. I couldn't go to the university because my parents couldn't afford. But Here javelin, in the Ghana, but, but javelin paid. I have two degrees for free because of javelin. I have a bachelor's, a master's, I'm pursuing my PhD right now. <laughs> so if you are talking about benefit, that is a benefit right there. That's, that's, that's right there. But the other not so important benefits, I stay fit. I, you know, it motivates me. I, you know, I have met so many people having not been javelin. I have traveled to so many countries having not been javelin. I have a full wife. I have a wife because of javelin. <laughs> <laughs> so the benefits are just countless um, but like I said more importantly even if you take all these benefits out I enjoy throwing I have competed for Ghana without when some of my teammates too without receiving a, a pay per diem and I we still did it I mean at that time I can mention the, the date and but it's not part of this conversation but that is how much I love Ghana and that's how much I love to throw the javelin and compete. But you did in it spite for, of you did it without per diem. Yeah, there was a time that we've competed without per diem, and we were we were made aware. Are you at all? Yes, we okay. were made aware, but we still did it, and we could have said you know otherwise, right? Because like you said, if we were thinking about like I told you that it's not just benefit, then benefit. I would say yeah. But every opportunity that we put this on. This jersey on, it's, it's, uh, there's something that I don't know how to describe. It's not, it's not about money or, you know, so, so that's why sometimes athletes will get a bit frustrated when people put pressure on us like, oh, they are not winning medal. Nobody want to win medal more than the athletes. I'm the one that is training. I'm the one that is putting my body, sacrificing, can't do this, can't do that, can't so much. I want to win. Nobody want to win more than me or my teammates, right? So. That is the benefit that I, 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 can, I can mention, but I, you know, in spite of that, you have to also be motivated to, to, to get it done. To get, to get it, it done. done. In fact, I, just like you mentioned, I've said it count a thousand and one times. Uh, sometimes it is okay to be disappointed that the athletes you look forward to, to win did not win, but it gets out of one when we become abusive. And that is one area I've, I've always said. We don't, those of us who get, who, want you to win we get emotional satisfaction i think so but we've forgotten the fact that you want to win more than us because it goes into your cv it propels you to get many many opportunities out there and but i get to keep the medal not you <laughs> <laughs> now tell me about combining education and the sport it's it's, it's tough um very challenging um you know in the u.s um we call it student athletes. You're a student first and then athlete. Your uh, scholarship depends on how you perform in the classroom and how you perform out. So you have to balance it and you have to excel in both, right? Uh, but for me, it was easy because I look up to the people like Professor Fonzu mm -hmm. You can read what he has done in Ghana sports from athletics to hockey, uh, volleyball, uh, mention it. And if this with all, and he's a three-time or four-time Olympian. Professor Andrew Osu, the same thing, three or four times Olympian, all the records that they have achieved. And they were able, they are think different, they different, but if they are able to do it, I look up to them. So that really kept me, if they are able to do it, I think I can also do it. So they set the pace, they set the standard. 
we may not be able to clear their standard. Their standard is so high. Their standard is high. Yeah. But at least um, there, is, there is something there that you can look up to. Uh, they, they, they mentor us, they teach us anytime we have difficulties. Um, you know, they are educators, uh, after all, that's their profession. Yeah. Um, we, we have challenges, they, they help us. They've already gone through the path that we are going through. Yeah. So, um, reaching out to them, they're able to tell us, you know, where the road is a bit slippery and where we should watch our steps, where we should run and where we should walk, uh, you know, all those kind of stuff. Um, so, it's, it's very tough, it's very challenging, um, but um, with their advice and, you know, their mentorship, um, I, you know, it's, um, it's, been, uh, it's, been, it's been fun. You've mentioned Prof Dodo many times. I'm wondering what kind of influence this man has had on your life and, and, and athletics in general. He is the person who made me who I am. Without him, I wouldn't have been, I wouldn't have been the John Ampumanda Ghana, as you know, the Ghanaians know, you know. Without him, I wouldn't have been um, who I am. He just gave me that one opportunity and that's what. I'm not saying that I am there yet, but you know, I'm just getting emotional because anytime I think about it, opportunity is just, you know, sometimes we don't pay attention to like how just one opportunity can change a person's life, not just the person, but their family, you know, their community, and even their, the country. Uh, just one opportunity, just one opportunity to call me to camp. It has, changed me so much, not just me, but you know, just my, my family, my, my community, and I'm just always thankful to him. And of all the things that uh, he's done for me and some of my teammates, I just get emotional. I know, you know, he doesn't probably want people yeah. to talk about some of this stuff. He's always hiding. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why. But, uh, he's not know. hiding, but you know, sometimes, when he does he stuff, does, he doesn't want it, people to talk about them. He doesn't yeah, want to say, you know, Prof did this or Prof did that. Yeah, but I just want to make it clear because um, I, you know, wherever I stand, that's, I mention God's name, I mention Prof Dudu second. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a massive one. You told me you were doing your PhD. PhD in what? Um, criminology. Oh. PhD in criminology. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so why you do what you do <laughs> exactly so <laughs> i just want to know why you do what you do wow that's a massive one then let's i think mean, let's come back to the field <laughs> if you want to know what i do no i ask questions no no no, no that is uh yeah, no, it's, no, it's, just, it's, just on the lighter side yes 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 but uh you know um yeah so that's that's what i do yeah. wow that's what i'm trying to wow that's a massive one. Yeah. And you're doing that in the US? Yes. I see. Ah. So when you did you leave the police service entirely in Ghana? Or you um, never left? Can, uh, can we skip that a little bit, please? <laughs> <laughs> that, I won't skip that. I okay. want to. No, I understand. Yeah. I understand. I understand. Because yeah. it's, it, it, yeah. it, it is quite a delicate area yeah. to speak yeah. about. You came for the African Games 2023. Yes. Though we never expected to see you. But you showed up. How do you describe the event so far? <clears throat> I think um, it, it's been. I think it's been good. It's, there's been a bit, a bit of a hiccup. I think, um, and I could, you know, I, this is based on the general, you know, conversation that people are having. I think it's a public knowledge, so I don't have to share it. But I think the, the experience has been good for me so far. Um, for me, <clears throat> I was telling some of my teammates that. If you focus on the negative so much, you are not going to be able, you are going to miss this opportunity. Once this game is over, it's over. You're going to go back a few years. Uh, this moment is never going to come back. So uh, if everybody is here and we are all competing under the same condition, then there's no excuse. Once we show up, we show up. We just give our best. So I think uh, it's been good uh, to me. Uh, the experience so far uh, it's not been bad, um, given the the, the 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 preparation the the speed and uh, i think you know it could have could that could it have been better i think so uh, there's always room for improvements in every aspect you me what we do uh there's always room for improvement maybe with this um we have now we have the infrastructure they know where the shortfalls are yeah they can build on and host another one yeah you know they can bid for another one yeah 
Uh, these simple structures are here. Uh, it's an opportunity for the students here to use it, um, open it to the public, to use it, to keep fit, uh, those who want to throw, those who want to run. Um, so it's been, it's been wonderful. Even countries. Even yeah. countries can yeah, use yeah, it. Yeah, 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 for the event. So it's been good. It's been good so far, I would say. It's been good. One of your teammates, your Paul, won a gold medal. Yes, yes, he did. And that's why I keep saying that, you know, once you show up, you show up. We are all con competing under, this, under the same condition, so there's no excuse as an athlete. What about yourself? How would you describe your event? Uh, it's not what I was expecting, uh, you know, um, but I think I, um, I'm a little bit disappointed that I couldn't make it to the finals. I come in and I didn't feel very um, good uh, over the past few I have been kind of trying to get back it's been kind of uh, a little bit back and forth like you know ups and down uh, but this was the time that I was really really ready uh, but unfortunately it didn't go as planned uh, but I just want to say I have had a second thought uh, discuss with you know some people about what I mean, where do I go from here? And so where do you go from here? If this is the last one, I'm very happy to have done it home. But I think in the next few uh, weeks or months, I will make the decision. I will sit down with my um, advisors and coaches and other staff to make a decision from here. The season is still young, so. The season is still young. Yeah. So it doesn't mean that, let's say, the world, uh, the uh, African Championships in Cameroon, we might see John. You never know, uh, because we officially have not really opened up. Well, I did compete a couple of weeks before I came in, uh, came to Ghana. But uh, the real adult meet in the U.S. is kind of starting. Yeah. So that's why what I mean by the the season is young. Yeah. So you never know. Um, if this were to be your f last and final event, wearing this jersey representing Madagana, what message would you would you deliver? Um, yeah, I think um, first of all, I think the crowd here was just massive. Um, I have never seen, apart from the Olympics or uh, Commonwealth Games or you know other big events, uh, World Champs and stuff. I've never seen a big crowd like this with the. Wow boys uh, from, you know, uh, uh, the, the various halls singing Jama and all yeah. those kind of stuff. And I think and if we can, elderly, yes, staff, yes, the all this, yes, high profile. People. If we can host something like this from time to time, I invite other neighboring like countries, uh, Nigeria, even if it's like a small prof, Dodo was doing something like with the Grand Prix, yeah. invite few yeah. people, yeah. few countries, neighboring countries, Nigerians always like to, kind of beef with us, with, even with the Jollof. <laughs> Invite them, bring the crowd, you know, give them a showdown, proper yeah. showdown. Yeah. Um, I think um, I see um, athletics, you know, going, we are already there, but it's even going to get better. Um, but my message to Ghanaians is keep supporting us. Um, that is what I would say, uh, because without your support, um, you know, we are, not going to be able to uh, motivate it, get the moti you know, uh, be motivated like you know, um, other other sports. I don't mention them, but um, <laughs> equal. It, we we don't we don't. <laughs> I know that you wanted to mention. Yeah, but we are not so asking. Should I mention for, it for you? Please. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we are not asking for equal. Um, Remunerations. Yes, that's not what we are asking. We are asking for equity. Uh, what we also. Deserve. deserve to be better, uh, whether be it financial, um, uh, you know, uh, exposure in the media, support like you guys have always been doing. Just yeah. keep doing that for us. Uh, and this, I think, motivate the young ones. Some of them want to appear on your show too. Yeah. Uh, that is a motivation. Yeah. Uh, just keep doing that for us. So uh, my, my, my first message is thank you, Ghanaians, for this massive show, uh, showing up to support uh, Team Ghana. It's just amazing. Just, you know, don't stop here. Just keep supporting us wherever, whether at home or abroad, uh, sit behind your television if you can be there. Uh, um, you know, you know, share our, you know, GA Facebook page uh, is there. You can follow us. You can follow GA, uh, you know, and and support us. You know, that really keeps us going. So, just 
support, you know, keep supporting us. I want to be biased here. I want you to give a message to your wife and to your parents. <laughs> <laughs> My wife, um, she was supposed to be here with me, but um, um, Julia, um, I'll start with my wife. I know my parents will be upset, but <laughs> but yeah, my wife first, unfortunately. Um, she's been um, she's been an amazing person. Amazing. I call her sometimes my coach. She doesn't like that name. Uh, she's an ama uh, amazing supporter. Amazing partner. Uh, she's been with me through you know uh, thick and time. They call they call it thick and thin or whatever. Uh, but um, she is always rooting for me, um, you know, and sometimes I make a decision uh, that she doesn't even agree, but she still supports me. Um, so I just want to say thank you and uh, for the support over the years um, and, and the love. Uh, my parents, um, thanking you always. Thank for, you for giving that to me. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that is important, but also, um, um, praying and just supporting for me, supporting me, you know, spiritually, you know, financially, during my early early days. Um, so, and all my family members, my siblings, um, you know, um, my fans, people who have been supporting me both here in Ghana and abroad. Um, I just want to say thank you all. Thank you, John. Thank you so much. Yo, thank you to them. I thank you to you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Silver medal on the four by one. It's destiny time for Ghana and Nigeria yet again in the men's 200 meters. Running the bend really well is Claude Emmanuel of Cameroon, but Joseph Polamo has come onto the home straight on the lead. Is neck to neck with Ekanem Joseph of Nigeria. But Paul Amor is uh, coming through. Paul Amor is running really strongly, and it's going to be Joseph Paul Amor. Gold for Ghana in the men's 200 meters. Joseph Paul Amor. Finally, a global title to his name. He's tried in the past and it's not come true for him. And after years and years of sacrifice, he's finally African Games champion. Joseph Paul Amor is the winner of the men's 200 meters. And that will be a second gold medal in the track and field. The first on the track for the Ghanaian. Remarkable achievement for Joseph Paul Amwa, 20.70. As they came through the bend, it was not obvious he was going to win it. Look at that. He had to dig deep, chased and put under pressure by Claude Emmanuel and Ekanim. Consider of Nigeria, he found the extra energy and... All his life, he's lived for this. A moment that Joseph Paul Amwa would look back and say, what an African Games that was gold for a man who previously held Ghana's record when it comes to the 200 meters. It's been many years of sacrifice, many years of working hard just to fly high the flag of Ghana, make himself proud, make his family proud and the rest of the country proud. And tonight he's been able to achieve that. My guest here is Joseph Paul Amwa, the gold medalist yes, in the 2023 African Games. Joe, yes, congratulations. You've always lived for this, isn't it? Yeah. My whole life, I've wanted to win a medal in front of home fans. So I think this is big for me, big time. I love this. What was the feeling like when everyone was actually stand up for the national anthem? For you? It's my first time, man. No, it's incredible, bro. It's incredible. Hearing the national anthem being played because of me, that's big time. Can't ask for anything better than this. Man. Let me just take you back briefly to the Commonwealth Games, where you were. The first Ghanaian athlete to do so in 48 years. Did you always believe that this was coming someday? Um, I knew it was going to happen. Um, the expectation was so big, so I knew I had to deliver in front of the whole fans. Being, being the, um, the bronze medal from Commonwealth Games, it's obviously people are expecting me to like win a medal over here. Yeah. So getting the gold is like big time. And the crowd? Amazing. Incredible. I couldn't believe it when I came out. So everybody, you know, sharing. I saw my family, you know, my close friends. Just incredible. What would you say about your support system? Big time. Big time. My family is very supportive. Um, 
I know my uncle is here, um, my dad is here, my mom, my cousins, uncles, a lot of uncles, and my best friend is here, you know, other friends from, you know, back in the day when I was in high school and uh, middle school, so support is crazy. I just want to take you back to your early beginning. How was it like? I mean, I was I was more of a soccer boy, football. So when I went to high school, Pembroke College, second year is when I started taking athletic series. And from then, you know, I actually wanted to stop when I finished high school, but you know, I still I still came back to do it. And now I'm a gold medalist in front of all fans. Amazing. What motivated motivated you to do it? Even at the point you you wanted to stop. My uncle. I said I was I, I said I had stopped, but he said, hey. If you know how to do something, don't let someone force you to do it. You gotta do it. So, you know, like, you gotta motivate yourself to do it. So, kudos to him for you know bringing me back to the sport. Tonight, we can say your uncle is a prophet because he saw this coming many years ago when you yourself didn't. Yeah, big time prophet. He's somewhere in the fans, so when he comes out, I'll let you know. <laughs> okay. Then just 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 a quick one. In your days in secondary school, combining school athletics, even to go here outside the country, what are some of the challenges? that you have encountered? Um, going into a race, thinking you're gonna win, and you lose it, it could mentally you know, break you, but you still gotta stay mentally tough. So, I think there's been, there's been a lot of changes, but with the right people around you, you'll be able to fight this. Now talk to me about this. This has been an incredible event in the minds of many people, and it's a legacy you personally have left in the minds of many Ghanaians. How do we sustain this? Because it appears the interest in athletics is massive than we thought. It's getting bigger and bigger. And to see the younger guys, you know, running. I saw Fusini got fourth. I wish we both made the podium, but yeah. him getting fourth is still big for Ghana, you know. So um, the younger guys are coming up. James has already set the standard really high yeah. after breaking the record. First Ghana is going sub 20. So I think it's go time. I think we are all about to like, you know, work really hard to, to make the team and then make Ghana proud. One next for Jopo. What um, next? I'll take a few days off and get back to practice. Olympics later. We gotta, we gotta make that qualification, relay, individual, everything. We gotta go to the Olympics for sure. Bahamas is just, is just quite close. Um, we'll, 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 we'll put it in there. We'll, we'll have Bahamas in the, um, in the back of our minds while we're training. So, uh, coach knows how he's gonna adjust stuff and then come back and do it again for Ghana. I, I saw that is your teammate joke between you and then Alex. Oh, yeah. Has it always been like that in camp? Oh, yeah, Alex, Alex, is he? he's always. He's hey, always Alex! <laughs> can I come get some TV time? Come. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, we, we always we always have that, you know, back. So, him, him being around is, is, is a blessing to me and to everybody. You know, he's a funny guy. He gives you, you know, the motivation to even do. Even though he's not a sprinter, he still gives you motivation. He challenges us. Even though he's an 800 guy, he challenges us that he can even beat us. So, it's, it, he's, he's a funny guy, but he's good for the team. In recent years, you and Azar have always been those two that has inspired, you have inspired many, many Ghanaian young athletes. Yeah. And always, I talk about how you are role models for the next generation of athletes. Your shoulders. Um, I think, I think when, when he ran the national record for the 100, and when I ran the national record for the 200, it kind of set the standard, it set the pace. So automatically, we were the guys that were being looked up to. Yeah. So. You are still being looked up to as we speak. It's, it's only right. It's only right. It's, it's we we'll do our best to you know. We always do our best to you know keep everybody together and motivate the young guys. So I guess it's a blessing for the team. I am privileged with some of the challenges that you guys encounter, but you always come out here flying high the flag of this country. I remember speaking to John Ampoma and he told me that whenever you are in this shed, he can't describe the feeling. It's, it's true, it's true, like the whole, like, Ghana, Ghana is a beautiful place, beautiful country with, with so many beautiful things in it, so whenever you are the one people are watching on TV, it's, it's, it's something big, like where's kind of describe how that feeling is, but it's always a good time, like, you know, competing for Ghana. What message would you have for Ghanaians? Um, 
there are, there are better, even better things coming. Greatness, greatness is ahead, so we're gonna, we're gonna chase it and we'll make, we'll make sure we get that. Thank you very much. Joseph Paul Amoa, now a gold medalist in the Commonwealth Games here in Accra. They would have been a, would they have been a perfect place to do it than before your very own supporters? No, no, it's the best place, honestly. <laughs> best place to do it. And indeed, Thank you so much. it is the best place to do it and he has done it. I was having a conversation with Joe Paul. He told me after high school he wanted to stop sprints. But he said no, he can't stop. And I was like, you're a prophet. You saw this day when he did not see it. What was that key thing you saw in him and told him never to stop running? Yes, um, my name is Dr. Victor Enchi. I'm the uncle of Joseph Paul Abwa. You know, when he completed uh, junior high school, okay. I encouraged him to run when he goes to Premier College because I was an athlete myself. And I know that as an athlete, there are a lot of opportunities out there that you get. Even the social network alone is good enough. So after Premier College, he wanted to stop. Your microphone was off. Sorry, oh, sorry about that. You got video on mine. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, so my my tweet on. Oh wow. Okay. So. Uh, so just take that again, when he completed um, yes, yes, So when he completed uh, junior high school at uh, Mary Madoff Book Council um, School, um, he wanted to stop athletics. So I took him to Premier College, my school, and then I encouraged him to run because I know that in athletics, there are a lot of opportunities out there. So when he finished Premier College, he said, look, uncle, I want to stop running and focus on uh, my studies. And I said, yes, it's good. Uh, it's very good to continue with your studies. I'm going to take care of it. But I want you to also continue running. Because I know that there's a lot of network that you gain. There are a lot of social capital that you gain when you are an athlete. Because I was an athlete myself at the university. And I can show you the, the social capital that I, I invested in was very, very good. So he listened to me and he continued running at the university. At the university, he went to my whole Republic Hall. And thereafter, I said, look, Kwesi, uh, the way you run it, I think you could also... You call him Kwesi? Yes. Okay, you can also get international you know, recognition. So based on that, he decided to do that. And then we look out for school for him in the US. And fortunately, he got scholarship at uh, Coppins State University in uh, Baltimore in the US. So that's the end of the story. And then I've been monitoring him since then. Even at the Olympics, before every event, I'll call him a day before the event in the evening and give him some techniques uh, in terms of how he should uh, compose himself, how he should run. I can assure you that even the 200 that he made, one of the Olympics. I gave him the technique for him to qualify for the semi-final. But he slowed down to qualify for the finals and asked him the question, what did it happen? So, oh, uh, offer. The, the coach asked me to stick to his technique. That's why I couldn't make it. I said, well, you need to listen to me as well because I was an athlete and I know that he has all the techniques that Experience is the best teacher, is it? Yes. <laughs> and then, since then, He's been always been listening to me in terms of the techniques of how, how you can. How did you feel seated up there, watch your nephew win a gold medal in the Commonwealth Games? I was so excited, so so excited. I was down on Wednesday because I knew that he could have made it. Ghana would have won the gold. So thereafter, he came here. Realized he was disappointed. He saw in my face that look, I was disappointed. So he was also disappointed. I said, look, I said, don't give up. You have to go for the gold. For the 200 and i advise him to look always run through the finish line don't slow down run through you are not running with your uh, competitors you are running with a tie make good time because most of the time that he's made in ghana the records that he's broken most of them have been the hits yeah but i've been monitoring uh joe paul for long and being an athlete being an athlete that i used to be i know that there are some of the techniques that will go a long way to assist him with Lawrence. I'm looking forward to him 
uh, breaking the record again in terms of the 200. Yeah. Uh, because I know that he can. He has the capacity to do that. And I'm looking forward to seeing him doing that. So I want to say that to God be the glory uh, who has brought us this far. And I believe that there's more that Kwesi can do. for a better platform to win a gold medal than before your very own crowd, isn't it? Oh yes. I mean, it's always a joy representing your country. And if I, if I had won this uh, gold medal in a different country, the, the way people would be proud of me would have been different. But then having won on my home soil, I've done so many things on this same soil. So having like redo it, it's like, yeah, a great honor again. So yeah, I feel so proud. And you had your parents watching? Yes, I had my parents, I had my friends, teammates, everyone. I put people from uh, everywhere in Ghana. People fly in, flew in to come watch me, so yeah. Um, how was the feeling like when everyone was asked to stand up because the national anthem was going to be sung for you? So, if I may recall, I haven't heard like the Ghanaian national anthem being played for a high jumper other than Rosie Yeboa, like a female high jumper. But then for the male, I don't recall any anthem being played for them ever since I was born. So having done that on my turn, it's like I feel so privileged, I feel so honored, I feel so proud of myself right now. When the crowd was cheering you, what, 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 what was it like? Uh, anytime you jumped, the crowd erupted. If, and if there was a roof on this stadium, it probably would have been taken off. So this is my home, as I said. I've been here before, competed four years, done so many things here. I knew what my people from the Commonwealth Hall can do. So I invited them here to charge the atmosphere. And they took over me, honestly, like, to be honest. They took over me. The adrenaline I was feeling wasn't for me, it was from them. I wanted to make them proud, I wanted to make Ghana proud. And yeah, God being so good, I did it. What next for you? Uh, whatever God has for me. But personally, I've planned uh, to go on, on trips to compete at top-notch competitions to qualify myself for the Olympics. So, if God being so good, he's going to do it again. Uh, there's Basham, there is the Plantis. These, these people, uh, do, you look, do you look at them as, as in fact, the Plantis is not a human being. People okay. say that. Right. So, everyone who knows me knows I don't care about names. Yeah. People say I brag. I don't brag. I put in the work. I don't care about names. The only person I idolize is Ronaldo, Cristiano Ronaldo. If you saw it, I did a celebration. I don't look like my fellow high jumpers. They are also ordinary people like me. They put in the work. Bashim, top-notch high jumper. Yeah. The names are there, but then it's the legs that jump. So I compete against myself. This is a stepping stone. This is a new PR for me. I, I was jumping 221. I jumped 223 today. So a step at a time. I don't rush to compete with. You have space under your legs. <laughs> I don't. As I said, like, I don't take control. I mean, the crowd did. So, proper technique, proper execution, God did. The story has been that Ghana sold itself to the rest of the world wonderfully. In as much as the events were not without some hitches, the crowd here generally was spectacular. The dignitaries here were entertained, and the ordinary Ghanaian who watch on television and the rest of the world who joined Accra via any medium possible would say that Accra served a party to remember. The music has died down, these tracks would go to sleep, but in May, West Africa would be here for the West Africa Athletics Championship. Muftar Nabila Abdullah from the Legon Sports Stadium for Joy Sports. <laughs>